anyways, Vincent, you were what are you gonna say before we started recording? You're gonna oh, say yeah. some microaggression. Oh yeah, you have an example of people accusing you of microaggression. Okay, yeah. what is that? So back in university in my physics lab, I was working with a girl who was sitting next to me, and she was first mainly talking to me, and she sort of asked, I forget what she asked me specifically, but the question that she asked me forced me to reveal where my parents were from. And so after um, I gave my answer, I asked, oh, where are you from, by the way? And she remained silent for a bit, and then she said, uh, that's a microaggression. I thought she was joking, so I kind of accidentally laughed in her face when she said that, because I thought it was a joke, and it totally wasn't. And so I swear to God, after that day, she never sat next to me. Wait, but didn't she ask you the same question? She asked me, it wasn't a direct question of where I was from, but it was a question that like forced me to sort of respond with where my parents specifically were from. And so that's why I asked, just as a follow-up question, where are you from? And I guess I was guilty of mm. performing if, a microaggression. If somebody accuses me of microaggression, I was like, oh, it was just micro? Sorry, I'll try harder next time. Oh, I should. Oh, I mean, I don't like it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good response. Uh, no, Susanna, you shouldn't. You shouldn't, Susanna, you shouldn't mute your microphone because when you laugh, it, it it's like la your laughter makes me feel funnier because it's like some. You have the best. <laughs> so don't okay, mute your laugh. I'll be here, I'll be here to massage yeah, yeah. your ego. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's just that there is some background noise coming from somebody. That's what I was trying to get rid of. I don't know what that, what's that, where is that coming from. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I think it's Mars because he doesn't have a set headset. Everybody else has a headset. Mars, you're Mars is you're muted right now. Oh yeah, it's not Mars. I don't know who. That is. It's fine. It's, it's, it's Vikram has a headset. Everybody has a headset. Lois is muted, so it's fine. It's fine. I was I was accused of mansplaining at one time. I could not believe it. I thought like when she when she when she told me you're mansplaining something to me, I almost told her. I should have told her. Like I thought you guys were just a myth on the online. I didn't know you're real. <laughs> like I thought yeah, I was gonna say that, but I didn't. I held back. I'm very polite actually. When people think I'm very aggressive, but when I deal with the people that I'm opposed face to face. I don't. I'm not that. I'm not that aggressive. That's why some people get disappointed when I talk to Muslims. I'm extra nice to Muslims than anyone else. I You're actually, much more patient than I am, Armin. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys see my videos with the Nazis? There we go. Yeah. This, yeah. See, like people were Which so. One? I, the one I don't. Want, the one that I did with. Uh, I don't want to mention his company yeah. because he does. Yeah, but. They weren't that one. Like people, a lot of people got angry because I was very nice to the Nazis, and I'm not like self-identifying Nazis. Like I was very polite with them, I was very friendly with them, and people were like, you know, why are you being so nice to these Nazis? I was like, I had a Muslim on our channel, on Atheist Republic, that advocated for uh, having sex with children, killing gay people. Killing ex-Muslims, beating up your wife, and I was very friendly to him. And nobody said like, "Why are you being friendly to him?" Right? And we were like, "Oh my God, you're so patient and you're so polite." Blah blah blah. But when I did the same thing to the Nazis, th these Nazis, none of them were advocating for any of those things that th that Muslim was advocating for. Right? They claimed to be peaceful and all that, all that shit, and. But but why is it that me talking friendly to the Nazis got me in trouble, but not to the guy that was advocating for, you know, all those things? What's the difference? Yeah, they're telling for me, on when, themselves. For me, when I listen to the video, I don't, like, I don't know what you got in trouble for, but the only difference, I, I mean, but I can guess, is that when I watched the, the interview with the Nazis, you didn't really challenge them on anything. You you just kind of asked them questions. They answered, and you just kind of went around. I didn't, I well, didn't have. Uh, they were destroying themselves. They were so ridiculous. I was like, just talk. This is like they were destroying them. They were talking about lizard people controlling the world. Do you want me to challenge that? Do you want me to challenge that? Yeah. Like, what do you want me to say? I was just like, keep talking. 
and you know dig your own grave like why would i need to challenge that if i if i challenge them i would be taking time away from them um embarrassing themselves like i asked here i asked them can you tell me a single thing in the, that is a problem in the world that is not because of the jews and they they were struggling to come up with an answer like like that I wanted to give them all the time they needed to, to show people, like, look how ridiculous they are. They can't think of an answer to this question. Give me a problem in the world that is not because of the Jews. Like, it's, it was fantastic. I think I did a good job there. Yeah, it was a funny interview, but like, I feel like you could have challenged them more. Like, when they say, oh, the Jews did this, you could have asked, like, how do you know that the Jews are the one who did this? Like, rather than just let them kind of... Uh, say they are talking points because at one point I remember one of them kind of implied that uh, the Holocaust didn't happen but they didn't say it right away so I wish you went harder on them just to kind of like show that they don't know what they are talking about well okay so I, sh I try to show how how lack of credibility they have when it comes to knowing history right because their understanding of history was that Hitler didn't do like Hitler didn't wasn't even violent, right? I mean, like he was completely peaceful, and all the violent things that he did was in response to other people's aggressions. So, I mean, even normal Nazi, like not normal Nazi, Nazis, are not normal, <laughs> but even most most Nazis don't even think that, right? So I just had to show them, like, okay, these, like, I don't, know, I think, like, they just, just. By the way, is it? I said something about them. That a lot of people get angry, um, got angry as well. I thought they they were genuinely peaceful people. Okay, I think they were ignorant, they were stupid, they had a misunderstanding of how history and science and everything else. But if their image of Hitler, by the way, this this YouTube video is not going to go anywhere because of all the stuff that we're saying. <laughs> but their understanding of Hitler was somebody that wouldn't even hurt a fly, like. And no human being, they, they would, it would never do that, right? So, I mean, they're completely wrong, but like I, they themselves would not wish harm on anybody, right? So, it is gonna get, this is gonna get out of this, somebody's gonna cut this part out, and I'm gonna get in trouble. These are actually peaceful Nazis, right? They were Nazis not because they wanted to harm other people. They're Nazis because they didn't know what Nazis like. They didn't. They have a complete misunderstanding of what you know Nazism and Hitler Germany and everything stood for. I mean, they're still idea insane, stupid people. But you can't blame. Tell tell me that they're violent. I felt bad for them. I felt like they were crazy. <laughs> that they needed mental help. Did they, they genuinely, did they genuinely not wish harm on other people? Yeah, that's their entire... That was it. Like, he considered himself a Nazi Buddhist. And he's like... He considered, oh, that? Okay. Yeah, he considered, like he thinks any form of violence is, like, not okay. I don't know if you remember, but, like, a, a while back, he had a debate with this guy called Earthling Carl. Yes. By the way, Lewis... And Mars Sorry. and Vincent, jump in if you need to jump in, okay? Like, who wants to be a moderator? Um, like, I don't, I'm not good at moderating. If you want to moderate and tell, like, me to shut up. Because Susanna, you, you shut me up last time and told, let, <laughs> told me to let Mars speak. So maybe you should be a moderator, okay? Susanna, so you're you, awesome. So. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you could, tell, you could tell, you decide who talks. Okay, Vikram, go on. Earthling Yeah, so, like, you did a really good job challenging that guy, so Earthling Carl. I wish you did the same thing with them. That's exactly why I challenged Earthling Carl, and I did it with those Nazis, because Earthling Carl was a serious, like, he could convince people. He was a serious ethno-nationalist, white supremacist type of person. He needed to be challenged. He wasn't, like, what, what those Nazis were so ridiculous that I just wanted them to speak as much as possible to show to to demonstrate how ridiculous they are, you know. Er Earthling Carr is a more serious, you know, you know, person that could like actually convince a whole bunch of people. Yeah, you gave them the rope to hang themselves. Yeah, hey, exactly. I was looking for that metaphor. I I don't know how. I <laughs> I was I was waiting for somebody to say that because I didn't know exactly how. <laughs> I forgot. The problem, how. I got the you. <laughs> 
is that like right now, and this is completely my opinion, but um, we were talking about microaggressions earlier um, in in this meeting, and if someone is willing to be so offended by the asking or the reply of to some really really simple and mostly innocuous questions, mm. then you know, and and given how overplayed, now I'm going to get in trouble for saying this. Um, it, given how everyone puts the the um, blame and everything on stuff like colonialism, which disclaimer was absolutely bad, they're, absolutely. they're trying to give something as flagrant as, um, say, Nazis and say that's evil, and they should, over um, the more nuanced argumentation between um, 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 between Islamic fundamentalism and say a more, a more liberal branch, a more a more liberal branch of it, of Islam. Mm. So, um, you know, I don't think even when you're giving them all the rope in the world to hang themselves, that some people are going to respond um, favorably unless you somehow make some kind of theatrical show that you're really going after these folks because that's what people respond to: some theatrics and you know, not really fine argumentation. That's just my; those are just my two cents. Well, yeah, but the thing is that they had so much stuff to share that I said, like, I, I wanted to learn and I was so curious about their beliefs. I felt like every minute of me talking is a wasted opportunity for to hear their boss. Vikram, you're muted, so I can't hear what you say. Oh, yeah, no, I was just waiting for you to be oh. done. Oh, what I had to say was about the microaggression thing. The way I look at it is that let's say I'm hanging out with a friend and she, let's say she doesn't like if I use, like, if I swear, so since she's my friend, I'll be more careful when I'm with her, so I, I'll try not to do it. Not because, oh, I'm being PC or anything, it's just mm -hmm. that she's my friend and I'm just kind of hanging out with her friend, so it's out of respect for her right. friend. But, and I kind of look at it from the same way for that example about, a, uh, I don't know who said it earlier, but one of the person here, when they mentioned that they were talking to someone who was offended by, be, because we were asked, um, what were they asked like? Oh, they were asked like, "Where are you from?" I think right. it's kind of the same thing. This person's it's totally fine for them to be offended by it, but then just maybe don't talk to them about it. Mm. Lo Luis, what do you think? And then after that, Luis, you're muted. Luis, you're muted. Unmute yourself. And then let's ask Kassan. No, I'm having trouble Wait. with my audio or sound. So that's okay with you right now <clears throat> i wasn't following the conversation close enough okay I'm no way that's one with my sound that no worries Kassan, what do you think i wasn't focusing too much either i'm working on oh, that. <laughs> that's okay sorry for putting you guys on the spot vincent you're muted vincent you're doing a boomer thing at speaking you without unmuting okay. your microphone <laughs> you don't Oh wait, I can't. I still can't hear you. Yeah, hello. Oh, there we there go. There we go. Okay, so I do have something to say about the microaggressions. Uh, Vikram mentioned that um, sort of uh, people have the right to be offended, and then sort of just out of respect, not uh, just maybe not talk to them later on and respect their wishes. And I 100% agree. And what I also think about is whether or not sort of we, out of respect for who they for what their capacity is as a human being, say, well, no, I think you have the capacity to not be offended by this, to sort of strengthen your intellectual faculties. And as Jonathan Haidt said in The Coddling of the American Mind, view yourself as anti-fragile rather than fragile. And in fact, that's what the current uh, uh, so psychological literature says that people have the capacity to be anti-fragile rather than fragile. So should there also not be out of respect for their intellectual capacity to sort of challenge them or when they say, you know, that's a microaggression, or you offended me, or I need a safe space. Well, uh, my response to that, that is, though, is like, there's some people who, who come back and say, like, hey, my, like, um, the people I'm around have the right to feel safe, and they just get really, really antsy when you start bringing them up. That, like, you know, um, you know what, you're an adult. You you, you should grow up. You're you're. Uh, you should be strong enough to, to take this. And a lot of people can immediately take that the wrong way. So they'll mm -hmm. use that to become essentially a cry bully to, to push their point across. I mean, like, you know, I'm, I mean, I get that 
um, people don't want to, you, you know, we don't we don't want to intentionally offend people. If someone wants to be, you know, I try to be careful some most of the time when I when we're, when we're around folks out of respect. But like, you know, when you're talking about sensitive subjects, you can't walk on eggshells all the time. Yeah. You just can't. I mean, how 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 careful do I need to be criticizing somebody, uh, uh, something? Uh, um, um, if, 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 if you need to talk about things with, with blunt honesty, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to try to, I'm not, I'm not going to intention try to be a dick about it, but, um, when you're talking about, like, you, go ahead. Some, something and like, you, you, you need to be, you need to be, you need to be forthrightly honest. So I think there's two, there's two different situations and they require two different strategies. I think when you're talking to once one, a person directly. Right. If they don't want to be talked to about a topic, then I'll, sh you know, shut up. Right. They don't want to if they don't want a certain content or if they don't want to listen to you or if they're not interested in what you have to say, then they shouldn't they should have they have every right not to consume content or information that you're trying to present. But and that that's why when I'm talking to people directly, I'll try to see what the green light is and what the red light is. And I abide by it. Right. But when it comes to putting things out there in the public, for people who want to see it, to be able to see it, and for people who don't want to see it, are able to avoid it. I don't hold, there's no red lines, there's no barrier, there's nothing. Everything should be, um, everything should be, you know, okay, right? And nothing, nobody should tell, be able to tell me that I'm offended, so shut up. Uh, like, if you're offended, then don't consume my content. Like, you know, but so that's why you, people see that, like, when I the content that I put out there is very different in tone um, and aggression than when I talk to people on one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. basis, right? Because I'm trying to see where they, what are their red lines, and I try to abide by them. But when it comes to going out in public, if people tell me you can't say that, then I'm going to say that thing. I'm probably even going to get more of, uh, offensive, say it even more offensively, because like you, you are responsible for what you consume. I'm not responsible for what content you're exposed to. Yeah, I agree. I wouldn't say in anything, like, the first time someone will accuse me of a microaggression or that they're offended that they need a safe space, I'll put forth the possible conversation, like, because out of the respect for, for their intellectual faculties. But then if they say, no, I don't want to talk about this, then I'll be like, okay, yeah, that, that's fine then. But I will always introduce, or from now on at the very least, I will introduce the possibility of a conversation. If they don't want to have the conversation, right. then I won't force it upon them. Yeah. Everybody uh, has the... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, when, let's say you have a friend who is of any like racial minority, would you use a racial slur towards them? And if they tell you not to do it, would you respond by saying, no, I'm going to challenge you because out of respect for your intellectual integrity or whatever? Or will you just not say the slur, at least not in front of them? Well, the thing Those is are a little bit different to me than yeah. just generally offensive language. Or not even language, just ideas, jokes, whatever. Slurs are, I think, they're different to me. Wait, like, is this one of the examples, is same. this one of the examples that you're talking directly to somebody? Yeah, let's say, because uh, Vincent oh, yeah. is the I mean, example if, of... Yeah, if you're talking directly to somebody, I would respect that and even more. If somebody says mm -hmm. like, hey, I'm, you know, treat me, I'm a circle, I identify as a circle, address me as if I'm a circle. I would like even fine. I'm fine with that. Like I would be good. I would be doing anything when I'm talking to people directly. Whatever makes them comfortable, I'll go with that. Right? That's fine. But when it comes to talking on my platform, I'm putting my content out in the wor world. Nobody should get tell me. Nobody other than the owner of that platform should right. be able to tell me what is allowed and what's not allowed. Yeah, I was responding more to the idea of like what Vincent brought up of a person telling them that oh you're doing a microaggression or whatever. Right. But yeah, I, what you said are basically on your side on that. I mean, you can still laugh. You can still like if somebody says it's a microaggression, you could still like. I'm not gonna like. I'm gonna be like, fine, I won't say it. But I'm gonna still in my mind think like, well, oh, god, this person is ridiculous. Like just because I respect and I won't say the things they don't want to say i would still i would that doesn't stop me from judging them in my mind yeah. for how and different things have <laughs> and different things right. have different levels of offensiveness so saying the n-word like my n-word to your black friend is very different from introducing the subject that might be a bit contentious like you know 
um, mm -hmm. microaggressions or safe spaces. I think those are two different things. And um, so, and as Susanna said, slurs are just in a different playing field altogether. I mean, I, mean, I have a classic example here. Just, it's like it, 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 in Jonathan Haidt's book, um, he's talking about the incident that happened at Claremont McKenna College, and was which is this this young girl who came from a Hispanic community, wrote that how sometimes she felt. Don't quote me on this, but uh, she I think she wrote something um out there and um, said that she felt marginalized, and the dean w um wrote an email back saying like, hey. You know what? Like, I saw your I saw your email. Um, why don't you and I come on? I come on. Um, you and I have a conversation for so we can better understand students that don't fit the mold. And that simple innocuous saying, "Don't fit the mold." With you, you you go back and you read that email. There is no way in hell you can read that and think that this lady had anything but the most noble of intentions. Um, it, there was there was there were no slurs. There's nothing on side there. I'm like, are, are you so sensitive that you're going to be offended by something like that and destroy someone's career? And, uh, and that wasn't even a slur, and she and the, the, that fits the whole concept of what micro about the, what a microaggression has been. Um, it, it fits the meaning to what that term has now be, um, been taken to become, and it's like, um, you know, am I going to respect someone for um, for am I going to say, grow up to, to to someone who is being attacked with um, with 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 racial slurs? No, I'm not going to say that. But if someone makes such a big deal to to make something like a, a term like um, "don't fit the mold," especially when the overall context means uh, uh, that it's benign, it's meant to help you. It's it's meant to to you know to invite you into a spirit of good faith of conversation. Then I'll I'll have to respond with what Jonathan Haidt was saying, saying like the appropriate response to someone who's trying to cry bully you is "fuck you." Um, oh, well, I wouldn't say, that. I I wouldn't say I that into your face. Yeah. Since Susanna, I've jump in whenever you want. You're, you're quiet today. But go on, Sir Vikram. See, uh, since I've never read that book and I don't know that example, I cannot really Wait, comment on it. Just, it then just to, just to uh, complete what I was going to say earlier, uh, when it comes to like say the word bitch, to a lot of people that's a very endearing way, like, like women can use it. <laughs> But there are, there are women who just Me. say that word. So let's say I'm hanging out with a friend, and to her it's a really offensive word. I just wouldn't use it in front of her, you know? So that's mm -hmm. all I was saying. And the idea of like saying, oh no, I'm only saying this for your intellectual integrity to challenge you, that's kind of dumb to me. Yeah. No, well, there's a difference between using a slur and then general ideas like microaggressions and safe spaces. I mean, that depends on who you're talking to. Well, there's also rules of engagement with friends, right? So I like this is why when someone meets a friend, a new person, you sort of toe the line to try to see what is acceptable, what is not acceptable for them. So I have friends, for instance, that I would use dirty jokes with, offensive jokes with, and there are friends, other friends that I just wouldn't do that with. So there's different rules of engagement for different people. But I think the general idea behind whether or not people can shelter themselves from ideas because they think they're too weak, I think there's enough psychological literature to say, well, that's just a false theory of the mind. Yeah, it's handling it completely wrong. So, I mean, just in terms of, like, general psychological stuff, like, we, that's an aversive behavior. You're building an aversion, saying, I can't handle this. Like, we need to shut down these conversations. Like, um, it's a totally aversive response, whereas I think the correct response is to give people the coping skills to manage the anxiety or, um, that happens when having difficult conversations. How do you do that? Well, I'm trying to figure that out. I, uh, <laughs> well, let us know like as to... soon as you... <laughs> oh, go ahead. Well, I think James Lindsay and Peter Bogosian's book, How to Have Impossible Conversations, is a really mm -hmm. good way to start. Um, but all then... of that... But I, I read his book before <laughs> the... Uh, his first book, what was that? How to create atheists. Um, they they're all based on the assumption that somebody were so how to have impossible conversations. But I'm assuming again, you if you read the book, tell me if I'm wrong. Um, I'm assuming that how to have impossible conversation with people that want to have a conversation with you at least, right? But you can, how do you have conversations with people that are not even interested in having a conversation with you? Like if you like all the everything that you guys are saying about you're talking about people that are not even interested in having conversation with so and you want to change them but 
you don't even have a green light to get in to be able to even make a difference. So I don't know what you. Yeah, I mean, if like, someone doesn't want to have a conversation with you, you right. there's nothing you don't. To say, right? Yeah. Don't. So, but mm-hmm. but that's a problem, though. You, we're talking like we're talking about how to change people that we can't even interact with because they're not even giving us a green light for us to have a conversation with. So mm-hmm. I don't know, Susanna, how, what kind of a magic trick are you going to come up with to mm-hmm. go around that? <laughs> I mean, it depends on the context. So I think um, if someone's not willing to have a conversation, building a rapport with them mm, helps. Okay. So building a rapport over time will make it easier to have that conversation. So that's why I really like... I, do you guys know who Daryl Davis is? Oh, yeah. So for those who don't know, Daryl Davis is a boogie-woogie blues musician and he's also a activist who goes and makes friends with KKK members and white supremacists. Oh, yeah. Wait, is that as, the black was that? Yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, I know you. And, and he got called um, Nazi. <laughs> yes. And he That's what? a whole different story, though. He got called a Nazi. Um, wow. wow. But, yeah. So... That's basically his entire approach. Is he's like, I'm just going to build a relationship with these people I- until they're ready to have conversations. Uh, and um, he doesn't have. He's not a psychologist. He's just a re- he's just a regular dude, and mm-hmm. he goes and does this, and he's gotten either directly or indirectly, I believe, over 200 people of extremist race-based groups there's a problem with that that's fantastic but it's not scalable mm-hmm. unless and you have so much t- free time as he has to do it. but go on sorry Vikram. yeah no, i i'm I actually i'm on i'm inside on this and i remember listening to an interview with him i think with joe rogan or it might have been with someone else it was a while back and he's he doesn't say that he went there to change people's mind he just found himself in a position where he was surrounded with these people and he managed to uh, change their minds, but he never went out there to do it. It just happened, but he was in that situation. But he accidentally I think you're misinterpreting him, though. Oh, okay. Because I mean, I remember him I saying think that. It's, no, but I think he's not trying to change someone's mind. He's trying to get them to think for themselves. And that involves giving them the critical thinking tools to get out of absolutist and extremist dogmatic ideologies. And a big part of it is just psychologically, one of the things, it's about making someone's cognitive dissonance collapse, specifically for really extremistic groups. So the more you have personal experiences that are diametrically opposed to your deeply held assumptions, the more positive experiences you have, it's positive reinforcement, and you're getting more and more data, more and more data that's telling you that everything you believe may not be true. Hmm. And it takes time to change people cognitively that way. So it might not be scalable for one person, but I think it is a good model Hmm. that other people should take on. It is scalable, actually. I figured out how you scale it. Um, you, you go ahead and you do that, but you record the conversations and you put it on YouTube. That's how you scale it. And maybe then you do you have a conversation with one white na- one white supremacist or whatever, or what like an ISIS member or whatever. But mm-hmm. if and you manage to change make him doubt make him or her doubt a little bit. But if you record that and put it on YouTube, you might actually just by that one conversation with one person might actually change the uh, you know um, plant a seed of doubt in a hundred person each conversation or something yeah. so maybe that would be how you scale it yeah I agree with I mean on that there are these uh, political streamers called destiny and Posh, and they've been doing just that they go onto like these platforms to debate these people but then at the end they always tell them that hey I understand like you feel like society is rejecting you, you feel like no one's understanding you, and those are real issues you're facing, but there are better solutions out there than to fall into whatever like group you're a part of right now. And those seem to be quite good ways of de-radicalizing people, so they feel understood, but they realize that the answer is not to become a Nazi. 
Actually, I don't agree with that. I don't think you should tell them make any claims. You should just keep questioning their own their claims until they realize that there's holes in their reasoning, right? Like, yeah. you know, and and also take them everything they say. Don't say don't take it like as something. Rid- here's here's two ways. Uh, here's two things I learned while, while, by talking to people like that is find something you agree with them and tell them like, oh, that's I agree with you on that. That really helps. And even if you hear them saying the most ridiculous things, um, if if you if it's obvious from the from their perspective, if they're watching you and it's obvious for them that you're finding it ridiculous. I usually tell them like, OK, I'm this is very ridiculous to me, but there's a chance that I'm wrong. So I, if I'm wrong. I hope you could, you could show me why I'm, why I'm being ridiculous. Like, just make them feel like you're taking their them seriously, which you don't even have to act that. You could actually take them seriously, and I think like that that helps. Uh, but just keep question, keep asking like, why do you think this? Why do you think this? What about this? What about that? And then don't you know? If I don't make a claim, unless they ask me, well, what do you think? Then maybe I'll make a claim. Again, these are good methods. I don't always follow them, I, I some, but I think I've seen that they work the best. Well, one thing I'd like to bring up, though, is um, something that Richard Dawkins um, once um, discussed in one of his interviews, is sometimes when he's arguing, he's not necessarily arguing to change the mind of whoever he's speaking to. What he's doing is trying to illustrate how bad um, yeah, some sometimes. reasons and argumentation are. And... Um, we're talking about the limitations of conversation. We're talking about the limitations of um, trying to speak to someone, whether it's a far right nat, whether it's a far right Nazi or a far left social justice warrior who is just disingenuously clamping down and doubling down on their particular ideas and refusing to talk to somebody. Mm. You're right. You can't talk to someone like that. But um, in, in those kinds of conversations conversation so to speak you're not there to necessarily um to 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 have a dialectic with them you're you're pretty much in the middle of a street fight at that point in which like um, what what you say and what you point out is going to be is going to be highlighted by the people around you so rather than the the more gentle approach of street epistemology or even having it um even trying to have a civil conversation being a little bit more aggressive at, at that point and Pointing out how foolish someone is may be more effective. Um, but I mean, those kind of those kind of like just trying to destroy the other side and stuff like that. I don't think <coughs> like they're less likely to get either side to consider the other side's position if it turns into a fight, fight, fight. You know, I, and somebody who like oh, it's like a street fight. Jesus, what are we dealing with? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think both. I think it becomes just like a. Those are more likely to turn into something that both side, both the fans of both sides are going to come out and be like, "Yeah, our side is one, and the other side is ridiculous." You know what I mean? But well, the thing is, I, um, I, I, I agree with that to an extent. But um, there, and I'm not saying this because I agree with this guy largely at all. But um, there was a video pointed out when um, of, of Charlie Kirk, um, a, a conservative commentator, I believe, was was challenging. Um, um, was challenging the ideas of some far right people who who were asking him, "Aren't you a Christian? Aren't like why are you t- why are you talking to people who are gay?" And um, Charlie was allowing them to speak, and um, but he w- once he allowed them to get their point across, he just went aggressive and just started shredding, um, just shredding them in front of a um, uh, in front of a large live crowd. Um, like, now, like, is he going to change the mind of, uh, of, of of these far of these far rightists, or is he going to like um, put on uh, effectively put on a show for whoever's watching live and whoever's watching online to see, wow, these guys are idiots? Um, to you know, it, is he going to have any effect there? And um, sometimes I'm not saying, and I'm not, I, I am not saying that the aggressive approach is like the, is your go-to, but does it have its place and um, is it useful sometimes? I can't say it's not. I, feel, it's I saw those audience. videos with, sorry, I saw those interviews that Charlie Kirk had, and like when during the Q and A, they kind of shouted him down and stuff like that. But I'm not sure I left away thinking the same way you did, because I noticed that as a result of basically Nick Fuentes, the alt right guys, 
his fans mm -hmm. went to shout down Charlie Kirk's events, and they did it so much, but Charlie Kirk ended up canceling a bunch of his events. So saying that Charlie Kirk let them speak and then challenge them, I'm not sure it's fair, because there are many videos of him running away from, Charlie, from Nick Fuentes' fans. Like, if you Google Charlie Kirk runs away, you literally see people running after him and making fun of him. So I'm not sure if that's like a really good example, but when it gets to the idea of um, how to challenge people's views, when you're debating a person one-on-one, -on -one, you're never going to change their minds and they are never going to change your minds. It's more the people who are in, on the fence and listening in. Who will well, not, not never, but usually. I mean, rarely, rarely. Rarely. By the way, from Luis and Gassam, if you guys ever want to jump in, just don't wait for me to call your names. Just jump in, like be like, I want to say something, okay? So don't wait for me to tell you guys that. I know Susanna, you too, you're uh, very quiet today. So it's... And Vincent, you're also being quiet, so it's fine. <clears throat> I just don't want to feel like, I just I just feel like me, Vikram, and Mars are very like aggressive when it comes to um, just jumping in. And I just want to make sure that we're not like, the other people are not like being silent just because we're not letting them speak. Okay. So right. I'll, be I'll, I'll, I'll be aggressive. I'll be aggressive then. Yeah, you'll be aggressive. <laughs> yeah, just... So uh, that that's it's, 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 it's uh, the different tactics and dialectic as as Mars were saying. So uh, James Lindsay and Peter Bogosian have said that the the method that they sort of outline in how to have impossible conversation is really only effective when you're having a one on one conversation or even mm -hmm. potentially just a small group of people. But when we're talking about the sort of hitch slap videos or Ben Shapiro owns videos. Um, those tend to be effective in front of an audience. They're obviously not effective towards the person that you're quote unquote owning, but they're effective for the audience, as Vikram said, people who are on the fence about it, or even rarely the people who um, already have an ironclad opinion on some on some sort of things. So I guess it just matters in the venue, really. But I'd never do like I'd never try to own the person that I'm trying to have a conversation with face to face. I have a question. If mm -hmm. If we, we said, like, okay, so we accept people's red line when we're talking to them one-on-one, -on -one, uh, but we don't accept it when it's on your platform or you're in public or saying stuff like that, right? And I have been challenging a lot of red lines that people have drawn for for me and my community and our community many, many times. So here's a question. Why shouldn't we challenge the N-word red line? <laughs> What's the reason? What's Ooh, the reason? Trying to get yourself into trouble today. <laughs> no. uh, What's I mean, the reason why we shouldn't challenge that red line? There's no way this video is getting monetized. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you? Okay, guys. You... There's no video. <clears throat> there's no video on Atheist Republic that gets monetized. That's not our. That's not the issue that we're fighting anymore. Because we don't even. Care, we don't. We're not. We have given up on that. What we like every single one of them seconds after upload. Demonetized. What we are worried about is deprioritized, right? So, yeah. like that, like not get suggested, not recommended. So that's that's we don't grow. But anyways, so Susanna, you gonna answer? Um. So when it comes to this subject, my general rule is that I don't use slurs that would not be used against me. And um, yes, yeah, so that's just my personal policy. Slurs? I'm, yeah, oh, yeah like, I'm gonna. I'm, okay. I'm not gonna let someone stop me from using a slur that would be. Okay, used you against. don't use it, but why? What do you have against somebody that wants to challenge this red line that people have drawn? Why they shouldn't? Can they can challenge all they want. <laughs> no, no, it's not about. I'm not saying what should they be allowed or shouldn't be allowed. Okay, because when it comes to should they be allowed, we are agreeing <laughs> that all forms of speech should be allowed. I'm talking about whether it's a good idea or a bad idea, right? Is it a good idea for somebody to get like, okay, there's a red line drawn here and I'm not supposed to use the N-word and I'm going to use it to challenge this red line that society has drawn for me, okay? I'm, I'm not asking if, if, if this should be allowed or not, okay? Because I think most of us here agree that when it comes to laws and regulations, people should be able to say whatever they want. But is it a good idea or a bad idea for somebody to go challenge this red line? Uh, my take on any kinds of slurs or anything that's kind of more edgy is that 
there are things I would say in private, but I'm not comfortable saying in public. And but it all in the end depends on the context, because there are like George Carlin had a bit where he was in a theater to do a show, and they told him to avoid saying <coughs> any slurs. So he went on stage and he said every single slur he knew, and that was his whole bit. <laughs> so, but in the context that he did it. There's no way you can leave thinking he's racist, ableist, or whatever. But if let's say now he was having a show where he was saying, oh, look at these, whatever words, and then just making jokes and making fun of them, then in that context, it wouldn't be okay. So yeah, my take is it really depends on the context and what message you're trying to share to your audience. So and the what message, audience what if somebody, to... Okay, what if somebody just comes out and just says the N-word and nothing else, and the, the reasoning <laughs> is that, like I'm not, I'm not swearing at anybody. I'm not offending anybody. I'm just saying the N word, and that's that the would beginning. be offending and, a lot of people. <laughs> like mm -hmm. you, yeah, but it's, but I'm just, and the, you're saying depends on the intention and the context. The context is that I, I don't think people being offended should limit what I get to, what get to say. That's the context, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be racist to any group of people or anything. I'm just saying the N word. I'm just coming out and saying it out loud. Just to be like, F you to anybody that wants to tell me that I can't say something. So what is he what yelling it out in the public square or is he just uploading yeah. a video to YouTube? Um, uploading it on YouTube, knowing that it probably would it get struck down? No, it wouldn't get struck. YouTube actually wouldn't take that down. Patreon would take that down, but YouTube would not take that down. So you could, yeah, uploading it on YouTube. And I, it's just I a two second video. Why? I, why would, I wouldn't why is watch that? a video. No, I mean, I wouldn't watch a video. I'm like, but I wouldn't stress over it. You know, it's, it's just like you a wouldn't video stress over it. But, that's, but that, I'm not saying <laughs> if you guys will get upset or not. I'm saying, is this a good strategy or not? And if not, why not? On, it depends strategy on what you're trying what? to accomplish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you trying to accomplish by it? I'm trying. What? Um. By the way, this is not me. I'm just hypothetically saying, right? The person, the person would say, I'm trying to, I'm trying to send a message that people's sensitivity and people's, um, what they're offended by, should should not dictate what we get to say. That's the mm -hmm. only. That's the only purpose they have. What? Okay. So that's the only purpose they have. What would you say? I want to, to get. I want to get Armin a little headband that has devil's horns on it, so you can just put that on when you're playing devil's advocate, devil's so advocate, people don't yeah. get confused. You, wait, Susanna, how do you how do you know I'm playing devil's advocate? Maybe no, actually. Okay, go ahead. There's actually an event that took place near my old university several years ago that um it, that runs right up with this um. So my alma mater is at is in UC San Diego, and several years ago they um, they had some kind of incident where someone, some idiot, hung a noose on oh, yeah. a on some kind of tree branch or something like that, and that inflamed, <laughs> understandably, people people in the people in the colored community. Right. And um, so we have it. We have like a, a paper at UCSD called the um, I think it was called the Koala or something. I don't remember, but like they 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 they're known for for printing some really really offensive material. And they had some person who wrote this really really offensive piece um, about colored people, and they put him on a live interview um, that uh, on campus and. He went up there and just unapologize. Uh, just uh, uh, and just he did not apologize for the uh, for the article. He just went up on st uh, on stage and said, "Like, you know what? Um, I just like to say thank you for all of you for all of you sensitive folks that you would give me such an easy magic wand for me to wave around and just manipulate you with." And uh, we're listening to that as like, "Oh, um, so." And he, he he went on to say he, he went on he went on to say like racism is dead, and mm. you're That's by true. by being so sensitive about it. So I'm I'm paraphrasing here with what I with what with what I with what I with what I remember. But he was being so flagrant because he wanted to show everybody how he could just say a word and stir up this 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 hysteria. Correct. 
and he could just twist people's emotions around, just uh, kind of just play with their behavior by stirring up um, um, sentiment. So he was trolling. Yeah, I mean, in this particular example, we don't have enough data. He was trolling, but what I was thinking he was trying to do was show everybody that, like, um, how how we could how 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 just just a mere utterance of a word of that that stirs up offense can can can, can make yeah. people prone to to to, yeah. to being manipulated and so what I'm just pointing at is actually I've seen a lot of uh, alt right people actually loving the sensitivity of the other side because with a very low amount of effort they could right. they could c cause havoc. They're like, mm -hmm. look at how sensitive. It's kind of like telling people, like, look, this is my sensitive spot. Don't, don't poke me there. And you're telling that to your enemy. And like, okay, like, thank you for the information. Stab, stab, stab. <laughs> right. So, yeah. I think um, what this goes into is what what type of future we want to have. So, do we want to have the type of future where we have to sort of precariously navigate a very thin sheet of ice, hoping that we're not going to offend other people, or do we want to have a society in the future in which people sort of form ironclad feelings towards things like the n-word and, pe and people don't really think too much about it in the same way that Mexicans don't think about the word beaner anymore or at least I don't think about the word beaner and going back to the question that you posed Armin I have no idea if that method is going to be effective I can't imagine it's going to be effective at all I think it's just just Why going to come across as someone because I think most people are going to view it as someone just being uh, being a troll rather than anything else. I think a more effective method would be trying to have an honest conversation about the fact that we could have a society in the future where these Wait, were, were... It worked yeah. with Muslims. It worked with Muslims. It? Yeah, because the first draw Muhammad person, people like, that looked like a troll. And then more people picked it up. And, then, and now Muslims are completely desensitized to it. Okay, like, if, if it is effective... But they, right. If, if it's effective... Then I would, um, then I might be on the side of it, mainly because I prefer a future in which people don't have these sort of superstitious feelings towards words, where they get easily affected by, uh, offended by a word. Like it's just a word, and I'd rather have that future. I'd rather have that future than one where we have to sort of precariously tiptoe on this thin sheet of ice, hoping that we don't say a word that someone will get offended by. It's like when it comes to being offended. Uh, there is a comedian called David Cross. And he made a joke about people who are politically incorrect, like he was making fun of them. And people who are pol who call themselves politically incorrect got so offended that they trashed him on throughout Twitter and they threatened to like cancel him everywhere. And after I heard that story, like this is one of the things that made me realize that everybody is offended by something. What really matters is like what, how do you respond to it? But this idea that like oh we need to like develop a society where no one's offended that's you know, never going to happen everyone that's has not, something that's that not what the up. demand i think a lot of people get confused about what the de what the what the change that we are asking for is okay it's if you don't get offended by it, things there's something wrong with you okay it's fine to get offended by things in fact it's actually we're it's actually wrong if you don't get offended by anything like I mean, I get offended by many things. That's, uh, I think what the problem is that you getting offended shouldn't determine what I get to say. That's the line. I think a lot of yeah. anti, I, I yeah. think a lot yeah. of anti SJW people are missing the point of the the original point. Okay, we were, a lot of people, Christians, Muslims, other people here, come to us and told us like, we're offended, and we told them, okay, you're offended. So what? What should I do about it? All right. Um, and now the anti sgw people that were that are joining the bandwagon think like, oh yeah, you shouldn't be offended. No, that's not what we were saying. It's a, it's okay to be offended, but I mean you sh um, but you decide the things that you don't want to see. Or some people say like, I'm offended, but I can deal with it. Or if you can't deal with it, then don't watch this content. Like the demand shouldn't be don't be offended. How could people decide? You can't decide what you're offended by and what you're not offended by. I mean. You can try to get yeah. tougher. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, 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 I 100 percent agree. Yeah. Very, very quickly, just to sort of clarify my original position, I think right. it makes perfect sense to get offended by ideas. In fact, there's an evolutionary reason why we're offended by ideas. You get offended by bad ideas and you try to combat it. That makes perfect sense. Uh, the one thing that I'm a lot more suspicious of is just plain old words that offend people. I think that's a different conversation. 
people. I think uh, people get offended depending on their own background, their own upbringing. Their their. I mean, it comes from the inside. It right. it it depends on what happened to them. You know, ten, fifteen, twenty years ago, mm. and you can't know that about people. I mean, you can you know you can try to carefully learn, but so much of it it is not that moment. It's their experiences from years ago. Right. And but, yeah. that's why I was talking about building coping skills. Yeah. Because a lot of this comes from that gut anxiety reaction. Mm-hmm. And it comes it can come out very emotional and knee jerk. But yeah. Suzanne but Susanna and Lewis, you you both are talking about changing what people get offended by. And that's fine. That's another conversation. Maybe no, making it strong. No, I mean, it's okay to make people stronger and make them less sensitive, right? That's one thing. But I think the, the another, another fight that we're fighting... I'm not, uh, I'm not saying that. I'm, okay. saying, I'm not saying that they shouldn't be less sensitive. I'm saying that when they do, right. it's not going to hurt them as much. Okay, well, that's, mean, mm-hmm. that's the definition or, of less sensitive. No, like they're learning <laughs> how to deal with it. I don't know. Like, they like, can be offended the, about whatever. Right. Right. But I'm just, okay, but I'm not saying that's not worth doing. That's fine to teach people to get stronger and like to deal, like something offends them. It doesn't hurt as much as it used to. That's a good thing. That's what the whole point of Jaya Muhammad Day was for, To is mm-hmm. was to make people less sensitive. But another fight, I'm not saying that's not a good fight, but I'm saying another good fight, another fight that is important is that, okay, you're hurt, but that, that doesn't make me responsible for the content that, like, I'm not responsible for the content that you're exposed to, okay? So I think the activist that says I'm using the N-word, there's two things you could do with that. Like, if this beca- if more people start joining me and use N-words, like, annual, say the N-word a day, like, every year we do it, maybe as one, you're doing two things at the same time. At some point, if you keep doing that every year, people are going to be like, yeah, whatever. And actually, that's good for the people that are that are now offended by it because now... They're not as hurt anymore. So you actually help them not get hurt by a word. And you're also making a point, you know, publicly that, you know what, you don't get to draw red lines around words, right? We get to say it, right? I don't know. Actually, I, I, by the way, just to be clear, I don't know, like, if people ask me, like, okay, Armin, why do you think this is a bad idea? I don't know if this is, is a good idea or a bad idea, okay? I think it might be a bad idea because with racial... T- actually, I don't know if it's a good idea or bad idea. I have no idea, okay? But I know that personally, I wouldn't do. I wouldn't even try it because it's not practical. Like it's like I would get wiped out of on uh, from the internet, right? I would completely like I would use every single platform that I have, uh, and I wouldn't be able to do the, all the other activism that I'm doing. So I, for me, I know I know it's not practical, so I would not do it. But if somebody else do it, I would be like, "Oh my God, this guy is a hero!" I like he's he's leading the, he's doing something that for for us coward people who wouldn't are are not as brave as him to be able to follow one day. But right now, I can't follow you. But good for you. Like, is that a, is that what I would say, or would I be like, "No, this is a bad idea." The answer is I don't know. But th- that, this, that this, might be that might be the funniest form of activism I've ever heard. <laughs> Yeah, I can't imagine this working. By the way, yeah. what? No, okay. oh, why, why not? But you guys are not telling me why. Like, okay, fine, it's not a good idea. But can you have an argument? Like, why wouldn't this work? Like, it, we have shown that it worked with Draw Muhammad Day. So why wouldn't it work? Why would? Why wouldn't we do it with the N word? Did it work with Draw Muhammad Day? Yeah, it worked. Matt, like ten years ago, if you drew Muhammad and published it anywhere. The, the, you know how many there would be mass protests in the streets uh, embassies would be burning people would be killed now draw, Mah- Muslims are like oh it's just another Islamophobe whatever draw Muhammad they're like oh draw Muhammad as much as you want we're Muslim we're strong we, we're not gonna get offended by this like yeah we made you strong you used to not be, like they're like acting like they deserve credit for being strong about draw muhammad day you were so much more sensitive before you are more stronger about like you're now less less sensitive because of us so yeah thank thank thanks to people like us like you should i don't know in the long but, run it'll probably have the, the desired effect of making people less sensitive to it but I sure as hell wouldn't want to be be around when 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 it's done the first time. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly like Jerome Muhammad. Exactly when, like Jerome Muhammad. It was very scary to be around when you like as for the cart. Like, what was that cartoonist in Denmark? Right, like that was yeah. a very serious yeah. situation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look at look at Diane Herschel. Like, oh, when when um, Lois, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. Well, <clears throat> I was just saying it depends on where you are because if you drew Muhammad in Islamic countries, you'd still be in trouble. It's just that. In the West, they learned that they have, they have to accept it in the West. Yeah, yeah, Whereas, yeah. Exactly. So I, I think it all depends on the situation and what, what are you trying to accomplish by it? Trying to remove red line, like arbitrary red lines that people draw for what you get, the, what you get to say. In general. The response to why is it okay to draw Muhammad but not okay to say the N-word, at least not in public... The response is that there are different connotations that we apply to both. Like when we, Muhammad is a religious figure, so it's a part of a religion. Yeah. So if you're drawing it, all you're doing is marking the religion in itself. However, the N word has a history of all that, like the racism behind it. With there's like even those issues that happened ever since slavery still have impacts today in in different forms. I so it's not that. just so it's. If it's not just a, it's not just a. It represents a something that's really real in like the Western society. So, so you yeah. could say that um, there's two things you could say to that. You could say, all, well, drawing Muhammad also has a history of people that are not just anti-Islam; they're bigots against Muslims. Drawing Muhammad with bombs on his head, like, is has a history of. Um, associating all Muslims with being terrorists, so there's a history there as well. And then you could also, when it comes to challenging ideas, rather than, um, you know, attacking people, you could be like, I'm using the N-word not to attack a group of pe- people, I'm using the N-word to challenge an idea, the idea that you get, that people get to determine what I get to say based on their feelings. So I'm also attacking an idea, but not a certain group of people. So you could say that. I don't I don't think anyone would ta- ever take it that way, hardly. I mean... Yeah, they, but that's what they're trying to change. That's not the hill I'm gonna but, die on. No, no neither am I. Exactly. But neither exactly. am I. Yeah. Neither <laughs> am I. I'm not saying I'm gonna do it, but I'm just saying like, why? Why wouldn't? Why shouldn't I admire somebody else that gets sacrifices his safety, his career, <laughs> his everything for? It's the, the most of- disliked video on on the on the <laughs> oh, freaking right. site. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, okay, over the, the, the more, shot. no matter how many dislikes you get on 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 your YouTube video, it's not going to be the same as like a sacrifice, like someone like Salman Rushdie did for the rest of us, mm-hmm. you know, and getting death threats and having to be hidden, um, or the producer of Iron Hair Ali's video who got stabbed to death. Like uh, somebody could be like, somebody could be like, yeah, I'm gonna be, if I you do this, I'm gonna get dislike, I'm gonna get, um, us, you know, people are gonna demonize me, I'm gonna lose my job. But other people have done, way, like, have lost a lot more for freedom of expression. So I'm going to take it. So why wouldn't we t- say that this person is like a hero? Why wouldn't we say that? Because I would, think most people wouldn't know what he was trying to accomplish. I would know. I mean, well, yeah, but that wouldn't. The <laughs> most, but, but the idea is communication. You're not communicating. I mean, just get up and say the word. You're not communicating what you would like to okay, good happen point. in the future. The video is going to be longer then. First, you're going to ex- f- spend five minutes <laughs> explaining. The video is going to be like... It's going gonna... to be like you're burning the Quran. Exactly. So you're going to announce that by the end of this video... Okay, here's how the video is going to start. <laughs> if you... Are you going to announce people like here? Armin is here's... scripting his downfall. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to tell people, you're going to warn people not to watch the re- in this video if they're going to get offended by me saying the N-word. Are you gonna, the person going to say, like, I, by the end of this video, I'm going to announce, that I'm going to mention the N-word. If this is something that you're uncomfortable with, stop watching now. I gave you a warning. I don't want people to be exposed to anything they're uncomfortable with. And now I'm going to... Um, to for, to give you more time to stop watching this video if you're uncomfortable with me saying the N-word, I'm going to list the reasons why I'm saying this and what I'm trying to achieve, okay? And then you explain yourself and you give people plenty of time to you know, close the window if they don't want to hear the N-word. And then at the end of the video, you say the N-word and you say, if, if you still watch it at this, 
I, even if you ignore the warnings and this upsets you, I apologize to you. I wasn't trying to hurt your feelings in any way. I don't know why you was, continue watching if you if you didn't like it. But if you did and you didn't like it and it hurt you anyway, I apologize. That was not the intention. Anyways, I said the word end with you. So, would that be a good strategy or not? I mean, you could try it, but 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 you know, it's not just a matter of like what you're saying. Uh, um, what, what 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 you're doing effectively is putting out a message out there that's going to clash with a lot of narratives out there that are already very very popular that people are are very very inclined to misunderstand whether deliberately or intent or or, or, or just uh, they just make happen to make a mistake so um and given how popular video editing editing technology is nowadays it's not going to be hard for people to cut parts of the video out that they want to deliberately represent you i mean like yeah yeah, yeah so but, it's gonna yeah, be but you know just, went to this knowing all the costs and all the risks and everything that comes with it but you do it anyways because you say I'm gonna pay the cost so that make it easier for other people to to fight for the time. next generation. Yeah. <laughs> for I other people, agree the, with that. the point is not to make the, people be able to say that word. Like people, like why? The, the point it would not be for people to be like, why would you have to say the N word? You're fighting for people's right to say the N word. Like why is that so important? Like no, I'm fighting for the right for people not to have red lines drawn around them. It's not about the N-word. It's about any red line. That's what you would say. So my personal response to that is that, first of all, I don't really agree with the way uh, Moss responded because I don't think that uh, people taking you out of context and editing your video to make you look bad, that's not your fault. That's, they, are, they did that. But when it comes to uh, what Armin said about uh, removing the red lines I don't think they are there in the first place because you can find plenty of videos online on YouTube on TikTok or whatever where people are saying the word and they aren't really getting in trouble over it unless a set in specific context of course so I don't really believe that if you just had a video where you said hey everyone I will say the word if you're offended don't like you can leave and then you say it and afterwards you apologize for it I don't think people would react much to it are you? What if I did that? Would you? Do you not think people would react to it? If you it, if you did the video in the the exact way that you just said, where yeah. you're like warning, this word is coming. You say the word and then you apologize for it. People would just they might not like it, which is something. Armin never said he would include like an apology. No, he no, did. No, I apologize to people. I said at the end of the video, you say that if you ignored my warning, and you it offends you. And you still heard it without wanting to hear it, then I apologize. I didn't want to upset you in any way. Like, right? I don't know why you listened to it, given that I already gave you like plenty of warning, but I wasn't trying to hurt your feelings. So that would be the video. But I, I, I disagree with you, Vikram. Yeah. I, I think I would get, I, I think I would lose uh, our Patreon account. Uh, I think I would get the platform for almost anywhere else. I think I might lose, I wouldn't lose YouTube. I, yeah, the, I'm not sure of that because we are YouTubers. Like, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. iDubs has said that word about multiple to mention times. Idubs, yeah. But he has I, a Patreon, so I don't think. Oh, really? Think, okay, yeah. If maybe. I'm not mistaken, if he doesn't, if he doesn't, um, I think he does. But he has like a YouTube that's monetized. He has. I know. He has plenty of revenue streams. Okay. Uh, I, don't, I don't think he has a Patreon. No, no. Oh, okay, okay so, but he has other revenue streams, and YouTube is one of those. Of his. Yeah, but YouTube doesn't doesn't demonetize all your videos because of one video. YouTube just takes an action per video. It's Patreon that takes an action on the entire on your entire account based on something. Then you just said. go to a different. Uh, there is no alternative. There's they're no all right. Other. There's subscribe stars. I like, know. I I've tried Jordan it. Peterson said I've he was going to do another one. Dave Not Rubin that. also Not said that. that. Like, None Plenty of them, of them right? That's that's a beauty. By the way, this market. is a good time to tell people that link the Patreon linked in the Patreon is in the description. <laughs> so not yeah. So <laughs> if you want to join this conversation, check the link. In the, I might actually lose a whole bunch of patrons after the conversation. <laughs> after this, <laughs> I like. Well, that's a free market, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, but the Vikram, that's a fair yeah. point. You're saying the barriers are not really there. Okay, so Lois, go ahead. Yeah. No, I I go back to what are you really trying to accomplish, and is is the risk you're taking worth what you might actually uh, actually accomplish? I mean, mm. you might want to accomplish things, but is it going to? Mm. And is it worth it? I mean, you got to weigh so many different things. 
Right. That uh, well, you, you wouldn't I, know until you try it. The problem with being oh, the first. I think, act- you, I think you would probably know. Mm-hmm. I, I just don't think starting out with one person, you know, doing it would would in any way make a difference. Now, <clears throat> with respect to the the draw Muhammad, a lot of large groups got into that. You know, it was sort of an agreement between amongst very many people, and and it it did work. But but you have to have sort of a backup. I mean, a group of people, a lot of people understand what it is you're trying to accomplish and work together to do it. But it was never the style like that for the first people that started. It. The first people that started it didn't really. Like they didn't have a full understanding of how successful it's going to be. Like the first people, the people that took all the risk and took all the cost, they made it possible for the groups of people that came in after them. And usually for the first people that started something like that, the cost was much greater than the benefits for them. But they just opened the door for a whole bunch of other people that managed to do the same thing. And for the people that came after, the benefit ended up being a lot more than the cost. But it was because of the sacrifice of the first people that accepted most of the cost that the large number of people managed to be able to come after. That brings up an interesting question, though. It's um, um, I like Ayan, like going back to the to the drum Mohammed example. Like um, Ayan Hirsi Ali right. uh, required a bodyguard um, and some yeah. kind of security service way back way back when. Yeah. Um, because she was now, first. They, yeah, exactly. Um, nowadays, we have so many, so many, many other people speaking out. We have, we have a large liberal and ex-Muslim community, and um, we have people speaking much more freely to the point where, like, you know, I, I, um, to the point where, like, I, I, have, I, the honest question is asked: Like, does Ayan Hirsi Ali still need a bodyguard today because of of everyone speaking out? Because it's become, it's become part of the mainstream conversation. Yeah, but she's still known as she's, you know, as the. You know, the people that came after never got like highlighted as much as she was highlighted, right? But the, but well. but the, to 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 highlight your point, the the reason why it became easier for the rest of us is because of people like I and her CLE, right? Mm. So if there was no high and her CLE, this whole thing would have been like a, happening a lot later, right? But somebody had to take up most of that cost and. The the cost that they paid was a lot higher than the cost that we paid. So that's what I'm saying. Like a lot of people like saying it's not worth it. Yeah, that's that's the problem with being the first. But somebody has to be the first. Somebody has to be the first and say the N word <laughs> publicly. Uh, that's you, Armin. That's all you. <laughs> no, 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 no. I still I this I still think there is a bit of a difference. Who was saying that? You know. With the, the draw Muhammad, that's a religious belief, whereas the N word is based on a whole culture of people genuinely believing that there was something, you know, less than human, and it's about people, and it is an it is an attack on every individual. It's not an attack on a belief. Well, I think it, it, it's a different. I mean, I agree with you know the red lines, and you shouldn't have to tiptoe to what everybody else thinks, but there are some things that, that carry such an extremely broad communication. I mean, well, it really meant the people that used it negatively really believed that every single individual was worthless. Yeah, but you say you might say, why would you give so much power to such a word? Maybe the, the, this word shouldn't have that much power. To hurt so much people with it. So the person that's making the video is like saying, look, look, this is a word that is used to hurt the, the people that you're trying to defend, right? Like the people that this word is used against, you have made this word so powerful that we have to remove the power from this word so we can't hurt them with this word. Like it's actually in, the, in def, it's actually in defense of the people that you're trying to protect that I'm saying this word so that this word doesn't have so much power that you could hurt people with it. I mean, like going back to, to, that, to that example, like what happened at my college, like um, when that guy was giving an announcement afterwards, he says he, he made the pronouncement that like, he just screamed out, racism is dead. Now, 
And that's it's, right. he, he says, well, well no, I, I, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that's, that's, that's yeah. something he said. He, yeah. he, he, he screamed that out there. And he also says something along the lines of, Look! Look at look at look at how you guys are reacting with this word. Look at look at what you're doing to keep it alive by being so sensitive about this. Now, I, I'm not I'm not advocating his view, but he 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 used such a he made such a flagrant example to to, to illustrate that for everybody. And you know, um, sometimes like if you sometimes I I think you need that shock value to to, mm. to really get people to wake up and pay attention to to yeah. to um. To something like that, and uh, it's uh, could I do it? I probably not, but mm. yeah, I have a hard time seeing what the point is. So he went on stage, said something that's supposedly racist, and then said, "See, you all got offended." Like, what is the, <laughs> what is the conclusion from this? Like, what are we supposed to do? Like, Good question. for him, a real hero he is. Good yeah. job. <laughs> no, yeah. So I don't, I don't think that's a good strategy. Like the video that I was thinking of, somebody could make the guy was could be like, listen, I'm using this word, and it's not meant to be like this. The intention of using this word right now is not to be racist to anybody, right? Like that guy was actually being racist. I think it's not fair to somebody to go to somebody and be like, hey, I'm going to tell you to like. If your mom, if your sister, I hope your dad dies in an accident in a very slow and painful death. Why are you being upset? Why are you being upset? Stop being such a little sensitive. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell are you like? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if somebody's actually, <laughs> so if somebody's actually being like racist and like in people's faces and be like, why are you being upset? Like, well, because you're being a jackass as well, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> like, I just need to clarify but, right, like, right. This event at my college happened a long time ago, and there's a lot of details I don't remember or could be right. butchering. So take what take whatever I said so, with a grain of salt. You know. But the difference between what I'm saying and what that, like, what the, 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 actually being racist is, like, you're saying, like, listen, like, you actually go out and say, like, I'm not being racist, Okay. You know, I'm. I, I don't. You know, believe that you, this racer is inferior to that race, or like you know, with the with the Quran burning video. Like I know there are people that burn the Quran because they hate Muslims, right? But I was like telling people, like, look, I'm burning my own book as well next to the Quran because I'm not hating on anybody. Because if it's like I was telling people, like, if I meant to hate some people, I should be hating myself as well because I'm burning my book as well. So yeah, made that clear. So if you could make if you if you make that clear, like I'm just tell people, like, listen, this might offend you, but this is not the intention. I'm just using the N word here because this is my intention, not to be racist. I think it's different than actually being racist and telling, demanding people not to be upset. Like, what do you mean, don't be upset? You're telling you're telling them that they're inferior because of their DNA or something. Of course they're going to be upset. How could they not get upset? It's, it's weird if they don't get upset. I literally yeah, had to make that... myself a drink for the rest of this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> there was something quite weird. I remember like a while back, I had this uh, argument with a guy who's like part of a free speech club in UBC. The guy was like full on, is full on like a Nazi, like full on, like he, he hates Jewish people and all that stuff. And I think I... I described him as being racist, and he says, look at the left, the left calls everybody racist, but he just yeah. said that he hates Jewish people, so like, a lot of times when people are like, oh yeah, they, they call everybody racist, like, I don't know, like, just look at the face, that's why I find it really weird when people use like the example that people, like Sim Moss used earlier with, oh look, he, he went on stage, he said all these racist things, and then he's like, racism is dead, you're all too sensitive, like, what point are you trying to make? Like yeah, I mean, there's nothing. Uh, with I mean, with Armin's new movement, <laughs> 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 I feel like the problem is that no matter what, people are going to be deeply suspicious of your motivations in doing so. But I'm going to tell them my motivation. I'm going to be like, "This is what they're with you." Say, why do you want to say this so badly? Why well, do this, you want to say? That's it? exactly what it's Muslims just, say. That Muslims like say like. Why do you have to say, like, why do you have to criticize Islam? Just go live your life. Why do you have to be so offensive about our views? Like, okay, fine, you're a Muslim and you're not a Muslim anymore. Stop talking about Islam. Why do you have to say it? It's not like nobody's like, you live in a free country, nobody's coming after you. Just shut up about it. 
Like, so, I mean... It's, it's legal to criticize religions or p- even people, right? You won't be arrested for it. But now, whether or not people themselves choose to listen to your content, to make protests against you, that's up to them. It's like, if you have a free speech to ex- right. to exercise your right to say, I don't know, to say Muhammad is... Or I don't I don't want to get in trouble, so like, whatever. That's <laughs> but it is also context. free for someone else to protest it. Actually, Vikram, that's the best comeback to this whole activism point. Because if you say the N-word, nobody's going to come arrest you or execute you or anything. <clears throat> everything is a social. Every, everything that you get, every, every, all the consequences to what you're saying is social, right? So you're protesting something. Like if I say Allah is gay and I go and on a, pro- a poster out in the street, I'm actually protesting against this being punishable by death somewhere right Right. and uh, like yeah but maybe the barriers to like using the n-word is not strong it's not that big of a deal for it to be worth challenging compared to you know Mm -hmm. as criticizing islam but then some people will say like okay then why would you criticize christianity then like why would you go and say like i don't know f jesus you know why would you do that like you, you don't get you don't get killed for that anywhere I got so many Catholics mad at me on Twitter. It was so funny. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah, when you retweeted my tweet at the Pope. Um, oh, my God. Yeah, anyways. By the way, Susanna, you don't know how to use Twitter. You started a tweet with an at symbol. That if you start a tweet, If you start a tweet with an at, then nobody's going to see that un- other than the person that you tagged. So if you well, I figured that out now. <laughs> so, so I had to retweet you so people could actually see your tweet. But if you want to start a tweet with a at, put a dot in front of it so that all your followers will see it. Well, thank you, Sensei. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, okay. I I want to go back to this. I think the one of the big differences is that a lot of religions cause harm and not just being killed i mean well i i uh facilitated a peer support group in in calgary uh where we if people that have been involved or heavily into fundamentalism of any kind and have are suffering as a result of leaving it of stopping mm-hmm. believing and more harm is caused than people really ever realize. And so there is a reason to take a stand against symbols of religion because it is causing harm. Whereas the N-word, nobody is causing... I mean, it's the people that use the N-word that are causing the harm, not the, well, you know, not the people that would be offended. And... So the people that would be offended by sort of any kind of attack on any religion would be the religious people who are supporting the harm that's being done. Well, the counter to that, Lewis, would be the idea that you could just arbitrarily come up with rules on what people get to say and not get to say. That's dangerous as well, and that's harming people as well. Well, no, I, I, I agree with that. But is it is it what is that- they say, or is it a word they're saying, or is it an idea they're communicating that is the harm? Um, I don't know what the difference between those two are. I'm just saying, like, so I'm just saying, like, if using the N word is not meant to uh, be like, oh, I'm trying to make it more acceptable to be racist, right? That's not <laughs> like, <laughs> like, there's too much, there's too much punishment against racists in this world, and racism should be tolerated and accepted, and that's what I'm fighting for. That's not, <laughs> that's not the point of using the N word. The point of the N word is like, no, this word has too much power, and you shouldn't be like being like it's kind of like Voldemort, right? It's like you're being the Harry Potter in this situation. Nobody's using the word, and you were like, "Why are you giving this word so much power?" I'm just gonna come and say it: Voldemort, 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 right? Say, it. see, no, it's not a big deal. I'm just saying it. No one's getting hurt by me saying it. And you, that's the point that you're trying to. That's that would be the point that you're trying. You're not trying to be like. You're like, okay, fine. You want to make something to- like more accepting. Why are you making racism more accepting? 
But then I'm saying that's not what I'm making accepting. Yeah, I'm, you're trying to do the opposite. Yeah, I'm trying to make the opposite. I'm trying to illustrate how people getting butt hurt so easily is, is stifling very important conversations later on down the line that may actually hurt the people that that it's offending. Wow, that's, yeah, that's that was better worded than I could have. Had. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> I'm, you can. You convinced me. That's a good. I, I, all right, I'm gonna do it. No, I'm just kidding. Oh uh, my god! No, I'm kidding. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> Time to leave the conversation. <laughs> Get the uh, hell out of here. <laughs> no, Wait, no. actually, speaking of, as the moderator, I have to give us a time check because our um, oh, yeah. great dictator yeah. here oh, has my. an interview with Abdullah Samir later tonight. Oh, so. Okay. Oh. Before we go. Gassan, did you want to add anything, or you're okay? If you're okay, that's fine. Like, no no pressure. Okay, he's He's okay. giving us a thumbs up. Yeah, he's giving us a thumbs up. This is great. I, I think I, I like it that people could just come in and just listen without having to participate. That's great. Like, um, Okay, sweet. All right, so let's just stop the recording here.